Welcome to Hopeside Vespers. Today on January 22, 2021. We're glad to be able to come together for, from many places to worship and fellowship today. May you be blessed in every way. God has given us a time to come together for rest and restoration every week. So let us welcome the Sabbath so that He can show us the way, the truth, and give us life forevermore. Today we are glad to have Pastor Chandrakant Singhe to share the message. We are also thankful to Pansy for arranging the many songs and participants who will pray and introduce and do other things. At this time we will hear a special song called Tumsa Koin Nahin by uh, the Yeshua Band. We were privileged to host them two years ago right here in Washington DC in the Silver Spring area. May you be blessed with this song. Oh, mm -hmm. 
At this time, we will have the opening prayer by Mrs. Rada Shinge. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Our God, our merciful Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is to come into your presence this beautiful Sabbath evening. And Lord, we are praying that you would be with each one of us as we listen to your words, as we listen to the music that is rendered. And Lord, above all, let your spirit pour. At this time, Lord, we are praying that whoever is listening would be filled. We're praying for the world leaders at this time who have taken over. And we're praying for all our church members, Lord, the young ones, the youth, and the senior citizens, that you would be the one to guide them. And as we spend just a few minutes with thy word, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would guide the speaker of the hour, and especially all over those who are watching and listening. We want to thank you so much, Lord, for this special time of worship. It's a rare privilege that we have. And Lord, we know your coming is imminent. So prepare us for thy coming. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we will have scripture reading by Mrs. Marsha Barrett. Good night, everyone. Scripture reading is taken from Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Says her, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Hear another song. Oh, God will take care of us. Be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. His wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care. Take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. 
test God will take care of you Lean weary one upon his breast God will take care of you God will take care of you Through every day At this time, Mrs. Rada Shinge will introduce Pastor Chandra Khan Shinge. This evening, it's my happy privilege to introduce my husband, Pastor Chandra Khan Shinge. He was the first born of the three children of Pastor and Mrs. R. S. Shinge. He went to Spicer High School and College, and he began his work as a coal porter selling Adventist books. Then he started off as a church pastor at Surat for almost a decade. Then he went on to become the department director for the union. Then he moved on for a ministerial for 15 years at the union. And after that, he moved on to the conference to become the president. Finally, he retired as the conference president. We both have three children, two girls and a boy. My eldest girl, Mrunal Chinge, her husband is a director at Papua New Guinea for ADRA. My second girl, Meghana, and her husband are in South America as dentists in Guyana. And my last boy, Dairushil, works in Pune as a configuration analyst. Definitely it's a privilege this evening and let's pray for one another as we listen to the message. We are glad to have Pastor Chandra Khan Singhe to give us the message for today. Good evening all and happy Sabbath. I would first of all like to thank the Lord and praise him for yet another privilege to witness for him. I would like to thank the Hopeside Community Church, especially Sister Pansy, and the one who welcomed, I suppose, Mr. Anand. I'm sure that there is a message which will inspire us to see the brighter side of what has been happening throughout this year. I just would like to mention that Pastor Anand Rao, Panzi's father, and Pastor Arash Shinge, my father, worked together conducting camp meetings and evangelistic campaigns all throughout Maharashtra. And we were little PKs running around, but were definitely blessed. And that is why I deem it as a privilege to say yes to Sister Pansy. Thank you so much. 
May the Lord bless us as we open our scriptures and see what the Lord has for us this evening and for the rest of the Sabbath. Thank you for reading the scripture reading. You know, the Lord has mysterious ways of using his vessels that he chooses for his ministry. And I must say that I was one of them, a mysterious one. I'd like to take our attention to the first scriptural portion that is Genesis 1, 26 and 27. It says here that he created man for an eternal relationship. <clears throat> and the Lord says that, let us make man in our image. But unfortunately, there was a created being known as Lucifer who was wanting an equal part in this project with the Godhead. And so it was not possible. The Bible says that he was able to convince one third of the angels to make a choice to join him rather than be faithful to God the Creator. This evening, my dear friends, I would like to mention that every person will have to make a choice whom they will serve. A lot of instances have been recorded in the scriptures. And it is simple that either you obey God or you disobey God. If you disobey God, then you obey Lucifer, who is Satan now. And when this power of choice was given to his beloved created beings, Adam and Eve, unfortunately, they chose to disobey. We are well aware of the incident, and there had to be a wall, a very strong wall between the relationship of God the Creator and the created beings. My dear friends, we have the choice even today. I hope there would be no wall created between us and the Creator as far as a relationship is concerned. Daniel, the second chapter, talks about a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, which basically gave information or prophesied what really is to come. And if you go through in details, you'd find out that Nebuchadnezzar was represented by the head of gold. And when this was all disclosed to him by Daniel, who was the one that the Lord has chosen to be right there in Babylon, it's unfortunate 
that they all had to be brought from Jerusalem and as slaves, but they were the bright ones, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who stood out and therefore were given prominent roles in the kingdom of Babylon. And during this time, it was only Daniel who could really tell what the dream was and the meaning. Now, just as Lucifer wanted a position that he cannot get to be among the Godhead, Nebuchadnezzar wanted that the whole image to be of gold. And when you go to the third chapter, you'll find out that that is exactly what he did. He said, no, no other can take the power that I have, the head of gold. And so he created a golden image and all was supposed to bow down. And there was a choice that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had to make during those times. When all the musical instruments played and all were supposed to bow down, the three of them did not bow down. They tried several times, but they would not bow down. They answered and said that our Lord is able to save us from this fiery furnace. When they were told that they'll be thrown into a fiery furnace. And they also said that even if the Lord does not save us, we will still not bow down. My friends, that was a relationship, a relationship which was so strong and such a faithful relationship that at any cost, they are not willing to bow down to any other. Now the record says that the furnace was heated seven times more. Now it has a connection to prophecy. It was heated seven times more. And I'd like to mention that when we have to make a choice of this kind, the troubles are going to be probably much greater than seven times that you and I will have to face. The Bible says that troublesome times are going to come in as no other time. And we need to go through and make decisions whether to be still faithful to our God or given to Satan. I'd like to bring out a point that the three youth were saved from the fiery furnace. But the experience that you and I may have during the troublesome times may not be like that. 50 million Christians who loved the Lord and stood for him were killed just because they wanted to hold on to the scriptures and God the creator. This was during the time of the 1,260 years of papal supremacy during the Roman era. But that, my friends, was a temporary death. We are told that during his coming, all those 
who are faithful to him will rise up again. AD 300, Constantine moved to the cap from the capital of Rome to Byzantium. And that city, he named it as Constantinople to honor himself. And it is at this time that the church and the state were merged together and the power was given to and the power was given to Constantine and he in turn gave the power to the Bishop of Rome who made sure that this church and state combination became stronger and stronger. Vatican lies Vatican City lies in the middle of Rome and the Roman Church continues there even today as a religious power and also a political power. Ignatius of Loyola was the one who established several groups known as the alumni, national banker, the mafia, the club of Rome, masons, and the new age movement. Baron Avro Manhattan has written several books on this topic, Vatican, and their issues that have to do with Vatican. And one of the books, The Vatican Billions, written by Baron Avery Manhattan, he says that the Catholic Church is a financial power of wealth accumulated and property owners in existence is greater possessor of material riches than any other single institution, corporation, bank, grand trust, government, or state of the entire globe. The Pope, as the visible ruler of this immense wealth, is the richest individual in the 20th century. No one can assess his wealth in dollars. In 2008, when there was an economic collapse, the Vatican came to the rescue. In 2007, September 7, which is recorded by the Times of India, India was introduced to a new world order. <coughs> and all of these corporations from USA and the Europe, European countries are still prevalent in India at this moment. <coughs> it all began in the year 1940, Germany stole the gold which belonged to Nicholas, the Tsar of Russia, <coughs> his wife Zerina Alexandra were used by the Jesuits to find out where the gold was hidden. May 8, 1945, Germany surrendered to Soviet army. <coughs> the Nazis put the gold on a train called the Mercy Train, having the Pope's flag 
and passed through the customs. Light and cold, it is carrying medical supplies for the war-stricken soldiers and carrying the gold directly to the Swiss banks in Switzerland. I am sure that will ring a bell what the Swiss banks are famous for. I just need a moment to wet my throat, please. The United Nations is trying to pass a bill that every man, woman and child will receive a certain amount of money and a number. Now shall we turn to Revelation 13, 16 to 18. Revelation 13, 16 to 18. According to God's word, this is a symbol of disloyalty to the government of God. I'd like to take time to read this. Revelation 13. Sixteen to eighteen. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and pure, free, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the name of the beast of the number of his name. It says that unless, in very short terms I'd like to mention, that unless you have the mark of the beast, you cannot rather I'd say exist because you cannot buy from anyone, you cannot sell to anyone and nobody will do the same with you. But the Lord also talks about another group. Let's go to Revelation 14 verse 12. Revelation 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. My dear friends, the nucleus or the crux of all of this is my most favorite portion of scripture which has just been read. Revelation 7 one, two, three. Let's take a moment to read through Revelation 7, 1, two, 3. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, or nor on the trees. And I saw another angel, a second, coming from the east, saying, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. <coughs> the most urgent message 
<laughs> it recorded in Revelation 14, verse 7. Fear God and give glory to him, for his hour of judgment has come. And this was preached as the most urgent message for the past 150 years. Yet the Lord has not come. And I also wondered why the Lord had not come. And a few years ago, I got the answer in this text. That the Lord is so merciful and gracious that he has died for each one that he has created. And he wants to make sure that everyone is saved. So he sends the angel and says, hold on, don't hurt the earth. The four winds represent all of the problems that the earth faces as recorded as the signs of his second coming. From earthquakes to famines to pandemics, you and I are worshipping today in spite of the pandemic. Praise the Lord. He has taken us through. And I'm sure when he in Ezekiel 2012 says, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them. And he says, and give us the, gives us the assurance that I will surely take care of my beloved, which is going to be read a little later. But I'd just like to make a quick description about the mark of the beast and the seal of God. Every time that the Lord would think of something good for us, it would be Satan who would contradict. The Sabbath was created during the creation and so it is the seal of God, his authority. And that seal, he wants to assure each one of us that we are his. But Satan contradicts and says that I too have a seal and that is the mark of the beast. I'd just like to mention that this changing of Saturday to Sunday in few uh, minutes, I just make two quotes. And a bridge of the Christian doctrine Henry Tuberville, page 58, quotes, For the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Sunday is the mark of the Roman Church's religious authority, and according to its own testimony, she has changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday is the mark of our ecclesiastical power and also Encyclopedia Britannica 9th edition, the article Sunday, Power and Authority, a letter from C.F. Thomas Chancellor to Cardinal Gibbons, October 28, 1895, the Catholic Church Record of London, Ontario, 
September 1, 1923. Sunday is our mark of authority and the church is above the Bible. Revelation 18.4 comes out. Revelation 18.4 says, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. God promises his assurance, his protection. Very quickly, I'll just quote in Psalms 91, he has given us the assurance of his protection. Psalms 91, 9 to 11, and then Revelation 15 to, he also gives us the assurance of him caring for us. We need to make a choice right now, my dear friends, at the beginning of a Sabbath day. <clears throat> Are we going to be faithful so that we would receive the seal of God and not the mark of the beast? When we receive the seal of God, it says that God has recognized you and I as his own. Testimonies, Volume 3, pages 446. A pure mark of his approval. The Great Controversy, page 640. He has called us his pure children. And God has recognized you and I as his own if we receive the seal of God so that we could continue and continue this relationship for eternity. May the Lord help us to understand his love and his compassion for each one of us. And may the Holy Spirit help us to make the right choice. It's not going to be easy to make the choice between the mark of the beast and the seal of God. And therefore, we need to spend daily, morning, noon, and evening, a prayerful life at all times, and read through the scriptures as much as possible. May the Lord bless us, is my prayer. Thank you once more for this privilege and for listening to the word of God through me. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Pastor Shinge, for bringing us this word. You'll hear another special song as our closing song.
प्रभुवा शरणम नीवैया
was a beautiful song. Beautiful song. We hope that you have been blessed with that. Now, our closing prayer will be offered by Pastor Chandrakant Singh again. Please remember the many families and their extended relatives who are dealing with many losses. Yes. Shall we pray together? <clears throat> we thank you, Heavenly Father. We especially pray for the families who have lost a loved one. We pray for families who may be going through right now troublesome times. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the assurance. We thank you that you have, through this trouble sometimes of the past year, have gotten us all through. But we pray for those who have suffered losses, that you would inspire them with the comforting words of the Holy Spirit and the association of the Holy Spirit, so that they will try their best to come out and praise you as some, even though we are going through troublesome times, but we still praise the Lord. We thank you for yet another Sabbath. We thank you for this beautiful church. <clears throat> we thank you for the program that had been planned out. And we thank you for each one who took part and all those who listen. And I'm sure, Heavenly Father, that this blessing comes from you. We now extend the love of God the Father, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to each and every one who is waiting to receive this seal of God, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Shinge, and our gratefulness to all those who have taken part today. May God bless you and keep you this weekend and beyond. At this time, we can meet and greet Please uh, show your video. There is someone who re requested that everyone show themselves and uh, feel free to chat with one another. But uh, feel free to unmute yourself again. I hope you got the message. And also please note that uh, an edited version of this uh, Vespers will be available next week. Thank you, Chandu, for the beautiful and timely message. So nice to see you after so many years. God bless you.